Hi everyone, it's Jessica. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I have been working on the stars and X's quilt and let me show you where I'm at. So I'm, I'm working on the stars and X's quilt and this is what the quilt looks like when it's finished. I have all my X's made and now I'm working on the sashing for the blocks. So it uses these pieces and then we um, sew these squares on with easy corner triangles and that's going to help form the star in the middle of the block. So I chain piece these and I just have have my pieces. I actually have a whole stack of them. That's only some of them. I have a whole stack. And then I have my white squares and I'm just lining these up and sewing them across. I chain piece one side at a time for all of them and then uh, I'll go back, I'll cut the threads in between them, trim it a little bit to leave a quarter inch seam allowance and then I'll add the other side. And so what I wanted to show you is that this is actually easily chain pieced even though we're sewing these as easy corner triangles. I have a whole big uh, line of them back here and I'm just working my way through these. The other thing I want to show you is how I trim these a bunch at once. So while I still have a lot more to go, I'm gonna cut my threads now and then I'm gonna set this up on my cutting mat and I will show you how I trim them. But before I do that, I just have to come between all these threads here and just snip them, but it goes so quick. I have another project set up on the Bernina and my little scissors are over there. So I have these big ones, but even though they're big, it's really easy to come in here because they're diagonal and you can just snip these apart. So I have these all one side done and we're gonna trim them at the cutting mat. And we're actually gonna set these up exactly like when we trimmed the flying geese. So you pick a line on your cutting mat and then you line up the seam that you sewed on that line. And I stack these because you can cut through more than one layer at a time. So I stack these like this. And here is how it looks from the top. So you can see all of my seam lines are in a row and they're matching this line on my cutting mat. Then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to put the quarter inch line on my ruler, which is the dotted line here on this edge, directly on the seam line. And I'm going to trim right along the edge and that leaves this really tiny little thing. Now this is smaller than I usually save for piecing. This stuff can be used for stuffing, stuffing anything, stuffing a pin cushion, stuffing, you know, cat or dog beds. These little cutoffs can still be used. So I trim them like that. And now all of these are trimmed and ready to have the second side added. I don't press these with an iron once I I'll just like I'll take this over like this I'll just grab a bunch like this we'll go back to the sewing machine and I'll show you how I add the second side okay so here are the ones that we just trimmed I'm just gonna push them off to the side for now so at my sewing machine then I just finger press that open take a square I start matching at the corner sides and the bottom and then I just hold that in place and then we'll sew from corner to corner and then I'll chain piece these. And then this side can be cut in exactly the same way as that we cut the first side, laying them up on your cutting mat all in line and their sewing seams in line. And then you just use your ruler and your rotary cutter in the same way where you match the quarter inch of the ruler up with the seam line and then cut. So that makes these really fast. And I'm making a big size, I'm making the queen so this is a big quilt, so it has a lot of pieces, but you know, little tips and tricks like this, like chain piecing, cutting them all at once, they really do make the process go quickly. It's enjoyable too. I find chain piecing really enjoyable. It's kind of mindless and you can just let your mind wander while you work on chain piecing all your units. And before you know it, you have them all finished. And for this project, the kind where it needs a lot of pieces, it uses a lot of different pieces. Uh, I usually just leave those out by my sewing machine. And if I have five minutes during the day here and there, I can just come over and work on it. And even if I'm only working um, just on a few pieces uh, throughout the day, that really adds up and you can make a ton of progress on your project.
I finished all the blocks that I need for this quilt. All 25, I'm making the queen size, so it's the largest one in this pattern. And I have them all ready. And usually when I get to this point in the quilt, I start to get a little bit antsy and I want to see the finished quilt. So up until this point, I have been chain piecing everything. I chain pieced all the units in the X block, then I chain pieced the X blocks together. I chain pieced these block sashing units and then I chain pieced to assemble the block. And now I'm at the point where all I need are these sashing units that are in between the blocks and in between the rows. When I get this close, I typically change the way that I'm quilting. So like I said, I've been chain piecing like crazy till this point, but now I wanna see the quilt in my hands and I don't wanna wait until I have all of these sashing units made. <laughs> so what I do is I usually make enough to start assembling. And I like to assemble my quilts vertically, so I'm gonna do this vertically, but if you like to do horizontal, that, that'll work too. So I'm going to get everything I need to make this row together and then I'm gonna piece this row. Then I'll add a sashing, then I'll add, and I'll just keep adding as I go. After I have a row done, if I need more sashing units to make the next, I'll make those first and then I'll start assembling. And when I do it like this, um, it usually fulfills like my need to see how the quilt is actually gonna turn out in my hands. Um, and I feel like I'm making a lot of progress because as I'm doing this last part that I really wanna be finished with already because I wanna assemble the quilt, I am assembling the quilt. So it's fulfilling that you know need and want to be finished with this project and see how it looks. So I am going to keep working on these. And this is going to be enough to do the first row and perhaps the first sashing row. And then I will check back in with you and show you what it's looking like. So I've been working like crazy on this and I've made so much progress. I am assembling the quilt top center now. And I did assemble the blocks and the sashing together like I usually do in a grid. So everything here is just hooked uh, by threads and I'm sewing the final um, seams. As I'm doing this, uh, I'm paying attention to the directions of my seams, making sure that they're going the same way on both sides of the block so that I don't have any twisted seams. I mean, for me, it feels like that happens quite often. So if I get one or two, you know, that's no big deal to me. But in general, I'm watching that and I'm making sure that I'm doing uh, the same thing on both sides of the blocks. And then that way everything will lay nice and flat. I did not press the blocks or the sashing or anything before I started sewing them into the quilt top. So this is going to need to be really nicely pressed when I'm finished assembling it. But I do like waiting till the end of the quilt top assembly to press. A big quilt like this will take a while to press uh, once it's finished being assembled, but I just love this way because it's easy and um, you don't get any warping when you're making the blocks. And once they're already sewn into the quilt top, there's really not much to warp. Like they're locked into place by all the stitches. So I find that there is no warping that occurs when you're pressing after you're assembled. This is the last seam on the quilt center. It's always a really good feeling. So let me lay this out on the floor and show it to you. I still have to add the borders, but this is a good place to stop today. So it's looking really great. I'm happy with the colors and the random placement. I love how the sashing comes together to form the stars. And it feels good to be at this step. So as I just said, this is a good place to stop today. If you have any questions on the stars and X's pattern or anything you've seen in this video, just let me know in the comments and I can help you out. And if not, I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for following along.